Angor, a world assigned on the reality of Earth-8, is designed to be some kind of an homage to the Avengers of Marvel Comics. It is a world of many heroes and few villains, and the stronger you are, the more responsibilities you get. As far back as the 1960s, DC Comics and Marvel have been creating friendly parodies of each other's characters. DC's showcase in 1966 introduced strange versions of Iron Man, The Hulk, Hawkeye, and Scarlet Witch, while Marvel in 1969 created the villainous Squadron Sinister with Doctor Spectrum, Hyperion, Nighthawk, and Wizard who represented Green Lantern, Superman, Batman, and The Flash respectively. Even if names and costumes are dissimilar, it is still quite entertaining for both DC and Marvel whenever they imitate each other in satirical but still reverent manners. Welcome to DC Nez, and today let's see the different moments when DC explicitly mimic Marvel and meet the intriguing characters of Earth 8. There are two main versions of the world and characters of Angor. The first one is published in 1971 with a group called the Justifiers, then with the Crusaders in 1977, and the Extremists in the 1990s, which were then revived in 2007 as residents of Earth 8 during the Countdown Presents story arc. The second version was first seen in the Multiversity stories during the New 52 era of DC, and they are called the Retaliators together with some new outstanding characters. In the first version, the Justifiers are from the planet Angor and they consisted of Jack B. Quick, Blue Jay, Silver Sorceress, and Wangina, who were analogs to Marvel characters Quicksilver, Ant-Man, Scarlet Witch, and Thor respectively. The Justifiers traveled to the planet Cam Nam Lao to fight the creators of the robots who attacked Angor. In Cam Nam Lao, they fought the Justice League thinking they are the enemies, but soon made peace when communication was established. In 1987, after the Crisis on Infinite Earth saga, the Justifiers reappeared. Their world was previously ravaged by a huge nuclear war because of the extremists that killed millions. Wangina called down the rains to cleanse the planet, and the sorceress tried to heal the sick, but all their efforts failed, and Captain Speed, aka Jack B. Quick, died of the radiation. This is the reason they came to Earth to save humans from themselves. In the 1990s, the Justifiers were called the Assemblers, and added new members such as Tin Man, Bowman, analogs of Iron Man and Hawkeye, TA, analog of the Wasp, and a few others. Then they were called Justifiers again. Yes, it is definitely confusing. Silver Sorceress can create spells for interdimensional travel, telepathy, and matter manipulation. Wanjina is a thunder god, Jack B. Quick is a speedster, and Blue Jay can grow organic wings and shrink to 7 inches tall, while Tin Man has a metal armor and chestplate all the time, TA is an unnamed woman with green wings, and Bowman has femme fatale complex. The Crusaders were first seen in 1977 as villains of the Freedom Fighters. They consisted of Barracuda, AmeriCommando and Rusty, and Fireball and Sparky who are analogous to Marvel's Prince Namor, Captain America and Bucky, and Human Torch and Toro respectively. In this reality, they were first just characters from a comic called Funny Books. AmeriCommando chose certain Comic-Con participants and turned them into the characters from Funny Books. They were then sent by District Attorney David Pearson to capture the Freedom Fighters who were fugitives because they were believed to be working with the villainous Silver Ghost. However, AmeriCommando was later revealed to be the Silver Ghost who wanted to take over Manhattan. Then we have the very powerful villains of Angor and they are called the Extremists. On one fateful day in Angor, a gang of thieves stole an experimental mega bomb. However, the bomb detonated prematurely and changed the thieves into the most dangerous supervillains of Angor, consisted of Lord Havoc, Dr. Diehard, Gorgon, Tracer, and Dream Slayer, who are analogs of Marvel's Doctor Doom, Magneto, Doctor Octopus, Sabretooth, and Dormammu. These villains quickly attacked the nations of Angor, seized control of its nuclear arsenal, and threatened the world leaders. The extremists used the bombs and annihilated Angor. Later, Dream Slayer created a new extremists that were modeled on X-Men's Colossus, Storm, Psylocke, Bishop, and Gambit. Much later, members of the Justifiers, the Crusaders, and the extremists were revived but are now residents of Earth-8 and they appeared in Countdown Presents Lord Havoc and the extremists. 
Here, apart from an ominous Russian wasteland, Earth-8 is under the global control of the United States of Angor. The White House is called the White Tower, and the expression of Oh God is replaced by diary. Petty rivalries and brutal vendettas transpire between the metahumans that continuously created chaos and fear for the normal population. Despite that, the general public elected its first metahuman presidential ticket. With the promise of stopping the metahuman chaos, Tin Man and America Mando won with a landslide victory. They soon passed the Metahuman Act that required all metahumans to follow a unified force. This unified force created by the Act became known as the Meta Militia. The advocates of the Meta Militia are Tin Man, America Mando, Barracuda, Wangina, Blue Jay, Bowman, and this big Red Hulk looking guy. Those who didn't register and comply faced legal punishments encompassing inhumane prison time, in concentration camps, or even death. This act is similar to the Superhuman Registration Act from the Marvel Comics that led to the Civil War story arc of the Avengers. Lord Havok and the extremists lead the resistance against the Metahuman Act and they run the nation of Slovakia. Also, the Justice League of Angor is one of the villainous teams. On the second version of Earth-8, during the New 52 era, we saw the Retaliators. Here, life was still similar to the life on other universes, but most of the Marvel mimicking characters were given new names and new appearances. However, one day a major threat arrived that was too much for any one hero to battle, forcing the mightiest champions of Earth-8 to unite against a common threat, and this gave birth to the rampaging Retaliators. The Retaliators obviously are analogs of the Avengers. Infighting between superheroes is still quite common on Earth-8, and the general public is usually suspicious of their heroes, even if they have defended them against many threats. One day, the Mad Lord Havok collected the Omni Gauntlets and the Genesis Egg, then stole the Axe of Wundajin and broke it. This coincided with the arrival of a group of heroes aboard the Ultima Thule from other universes, who were met by the Retaliators searching for Havok to stop him from smashing the Genesis Egg open. As the two groups made an encounter, Lord Havok badly wounded his longtime enemies, the future family, and cracked the egg. The outcome is that the Gendry achieved a foothold into the universe, destroying Lord Havok in the process. The egg was revealed to be an incubating form of a badly corrupted Nyx Uwatan. Earth-8 soon became the site of the confrontation between the corrupted Nyx Uwatan and the congregated heroes of multiple Earths, who ultimately managed to free the Monitor from the Gentry's manipulation before challenging the Master of the Gentry on Earth-7. This team of heroes now included Machine Head of Earth-8. Later, Lord Havok was revived because of the might behind the mirror, restoring the damage done to Angor by the Gentry in the process. Reuniting his team, he attempted to dominate Angor to forestall further apocalypse. However, his actions triggered a nuclear war that ended the world. Soon, Lord Havok and Dream Slayer realized their common goal. Thus, Lord Havok's sacrifice and his one-time alliance with Dream Slayer allowed Angor to be reborn as it was through the cosmic power of the Adjudicator. Therefore, the nuclear war was averted in this new timeline and everything was restored. Sometime after, monsters made from dark matter attacked Earth-8, so the Retaliators and the Zen Men teamed up, tracked their source, went to Earth-23, and fought Wally West due to believing that he is connected to the monsters. However, Wally West invalidated their claim about the dark matter. Now let's see the personalities in Earth-8. Let's start with the members of the Retaliators and the first is Machine Head. Machine Head is the pastiche of Iron Man of the Avengers. Machine Head uses an advanced technology suit that gives him access to energy projection, flight, and superhuman strength and durability. Like Tony Stark, Machine Head could be the smartest person among the Retaliators. After the Flashpoint event, various changes in the history of Earth Zero transpired and it created cracks in the multiverse that damaged other realities, including Earth 8, which became harder and darker as a result. Moreover, Earth-8 was assaulted by an alternate reality. The heroes tried to fight them while blocking the civilians from learning about it. They lost this war in secret and Machine Head was left disfigured, although it appeared that the invaders were deterred. Seeing his teammate overpowered by an unknown visitor, he warned him to get away from them while his whole team engaged against these strangers. 
The Retaliators soon became involved in the affairs of the multiverse, interacting with other heroes from across realities such as the Justice League Incarnate. However, their exposure to the multiverse had led to their world being attacked multiple times. Once things were cleared out, Machine Head and his team witnessed the hatching of the Genesis Egg by Lord Havoc that summoned the Dark Monitor. After that, Machine Head joined the Justice Incarnate to fight the Great Darkness. When the Supermen of the multiverse were being kidnapped by the Prophecy, the Justice League Incarnate met with Dread Sun Superman of Earth-30 and Superman of New Earth. Machine Head and the League warned the Superman of the incoming danger and helped them in finding the Superman of China. The group then proceeded in saving the Superman of the multiverse. Justice Incarnate's objective of protecting the multiverse made Machine Head intimately disappointed as he believed that all worlds in the multiverse must be kept separate from each other in order to prevent further invasions and crises. Secretly, he made a deal with Darkseid to help him achieve ultimate power by betraying his Justice Incarnate teammates in exchange for the safety of Earth-8 and this deal was supported by the Retaliators. Machine Head subsequently teamed up with Lex Luthor of Earth-23 to create the Carrier Arcs and killed him when he began to hesitate. He quickly overpowered the team and with the goal of keeping the worlds of the multiverse separated, Machine Head then formed the Injustice Incarnate out of the different villains of the multiverse. With his new team, he soon took over the House of Heroes. The Psycho Pirate then transported the Justice Incarnate to Earth Omega to thwart the JSA of Earth Zero from freeing Barry Allen from the multiversal engine that Darkseid was using to access the power beyond the cracks of the multiverse. Machine Head fought President Superman and defeated him by using a Meta Knight he learned from Lex of Earth-23. Machine Head brought the captured members of Justice Incarnate and the Batman of the Flashpoint timeline with him as he sought for personal revenge against Barry and Batman for the Flashpoint's effect to Earth-8. President Superman escaped and freed Barry. Barry vanished and the crack in the multiverse withdrew from Earth Omega. Machine Head wanted to continue the fight but Darkseid slew him. His body was left in a state of dimensional flux between Earth-8 and Earth Omega. Dr. Multiverse tried to recover his remains but only saw his helmet. Next is the patriotic power soldier and leader of the Retaliators, American Crusader, who is the pastiche of Captain America. Simply put, American Commando of the Crusaders became American Crusader in New 52. When the multiversal heroes arrived in Earth-8 to find the Super Judge, Thunderer of Earth-7 punched Wundagin of Earth-8. American Crusader immediately assumed that the visitors are in league with Lord Havoc, so he ordered the Retaliators to battle them. When Lord Havoc released the Dark Monitor, American Crusader defended the city and battled his own counterpart from Earth-7, killed and reanimated by the Gentry. He then assembled the multiversal heroes against the cosmic invaders in the final battle, playing a crucial role in saving the entire multiverse. Years later, the Retaliators grew disillusioned and believed that the only solution to protect their world is to isolate themselves from the multiverse. They made a treacherous deal with Darkseid to support his cause in exchange for protecting their reality. Unfortunately, their deal had no bearing. A crack in the multiverse drew Tartarus to Angor where he killed American Crusader. In the Infinite Frontier relaunch of DC, the Retaliators were reintroduced fighting the Suicide Squad where Major Force killed Machine Head. Scientist David Dibble aka Behemoth is the Hulk of Earth-8. When enraged, David Dibble transforms into the indestructible, virtually unstoppable Blue Man Baby Behemoth. While fighting the Suicide Squad and despite his invulnerability, he can be injured by Talon's weapons. He was also not strong enough to fight the Super Judge. Nevertheless, he bravely joined the Multiversal Heroes in fighting the Gentry Army. He used to be brainless when transformed in his blue form but has been shown to maintain intelligence recently while in Hulk form. His favorite line is Behemoth Bash. He was later killed by Tartarus by splitting him into half. Other members of the Retaliators are Purple Rain, analog of the Scarlet Witch who can teleport the Retaliators into different realities, Ladybug, a web-slinging analog of Spider-Man, Silver Eagle, the one who told Superman of Earth-23 about Machine Head's deal with Darkseid, 
He blames the Justice League incarnate for the death of Machine Head and the destruction of his world, plus he looks like Falcon. Red Dragon, analog of Black Widow, a master spy. Major Max, an energy-wielding analog of Captain Marvel. And Wundajin, analog of Thor, whose weapon was no match against Major Force. He is easily defeated by Tartarus and doesn't seem to be strong enough against the Thunderer of Earth-7. We also saw another team in Earth-8 called the Lightning Strikes, who also fought the Suicide Squad of Prime Earth. Dr. Maya Chimera, aka Dr. Multiverse, is a hero from Earth-8 who is the pastiche of Captain Universe of Marvel Comics with some mixture of elements of Star Brand or America Chavez. Dr. Multiverse possesses the powers of the multiverse. She is one of the few DC characters who has no alternate versions that exist in any other reality in the DC multiverse. Her story of obtaining her cosmic power was similar to the way the Fantastic Four got their powers. Maya was an astronaut on a mission to orbit the planet for the Canadian Space Agency when she was submerged in cosmic energies, giving her the powers of the multiverse and the vision of her purpose and her Earth in it. Now, she believes that the multiverse is sick as she discovered the crack in the multiverse. She is the multiverse's autoimmune solution to the cracks created by Darkseid. Her multivision can see anyone's body vibrating between one reality and the next, which means she can see the different versions of anyone in the multiverse. She can also determine a person's identity and home universe just by looking at them. Her cosmic tracking abilities allow her to interact with someone or something and locate them anywhere in the multiverse and transport to them. She can also tap into and control the ambient energy that exists between realities, alter the frequency of other energies or even banish people and things to other universes, and she likes the karaoke. Earth-8 is her world but people there reject her because she reminds them of how small they are in the grand scheme of things. Dr. Multiverse had many conflicts with her fellow heroes in Earth-8. She was once a member of the Retaliators but was expelled and her former teammates now dislike and mistrust her. Her multivision permitted her to see Machine Head's body in a state of dimensional flux. She tried to retrieve his remains but only managed to retrieve his helmet. She noticed the crack in the multiverse and went to the Retaliators for assistance, oblivious that they and Machine Head had secretly made a deal with Darkseid to protect Earth-8 from the multiverse. Then, the old enemy of the Retaliators, Tartarus and his army were drawn to Angor by the crack and assaulted them. The Justice League Incarnate also came for the crack with the goal of rescuing Barry Allen, who was trapped on the other side of the crack. She would soon join the Justice League Incarnate and with this team, she sees more than worlds. She sees an infinite future and it is a future she wants to save. As she was about to be killed by Tartarus, Tartarus became distracted by the arrival of Darkseid. While Darkseid and Tartarus were fighting, Dr. Multiverse was able to amalgamate her powers with the Flash and destabilize the crack, causing it to leave Earth-8. Darkseid followed the crack through his boom tube but Dr. Multiverse kept his boom tube open to allow the League to follow. Flash was scared to go out first, so Dr. Multiverse motivated her and they jumped through the portal together. The boom tube should have taken the League precisely to Darkseid and the crack, but they plummeted through a rift between the physical and spiritual realities instead and arrived on Earth-13. They met the League of Shadows who traced Darkseid through a seance then organized an attack against him with the full force of Earth-13 sorcerers. While they were waiting for the magical heroes to prepare, Dr. Multiverse attempted to flirt with President Superman, who she was attracted to, but he brushed her off. During the seance, the Justice League Incarnate and the League of Shadows were transported to Limbo, where Darkseid was battling a fallen angel by the name of Asmodo. They tried to reach the crack while he was distracted but they were interrupted by the Batwoman Who Laughs, a corrupted hero from Earth-11. The Batwoman Who Laughs reached the crack just as Darkseid was killing Asmodel and moved towards them. Desperate for survival, Dr. Multiverse discharged a huge wave of energy that destabilized the crack again and sent it to another universe. However, her action also scattered the assembled heroes and villains across the multiverse. She and Superman woke up in a suburban neighborhood in Earth-33 where their powers were not working, likely because the fictive membrane cut her off from the multiversal energy. As only ideas could penetrate the membrane in this Earth, 
President Superman decided their only way to communicate with the others would be to publish a comic. They spent three months on Earth-33 creating a comic book about the rest of Justice League Incarnate being dispersed across the multiverse. They also started a romantic relationship but broke up. President Superman met an editor at DC Comics named Ulrich Saxman who promised to help them but also required that Darkseid should win as it was better for the story. Avery Ho found them to be in Earth-33 and launched herself and Batman into the world but could not cross the membrane. By combining her powers with Avery, Dr. Multiverse was able to pull them out of Earth-33 and went to Earth-41 where Captain Carrot has landed. Here, Saxman revealed himself to be Darkseid and shadowed them through. The crack had been claimed by the Annihilator in Earth-41 while currently fighting all the heroes of that world. Dr. Multiverse found no other solution to keep Multiverse safe. She closed the crack but only managed to contain it. Her eyes turned to solid black and she informed the others they needed to let Darkseid win. Darkseid then transported the League to Earth Omega and told them that she saw the history of the multiverse when she absorbed the crack. From the time of its creation, the Great Darkness has been driving to destroy it and Darkseid has been trying to stop it, as the darkness is the enemy of evil as well as good. The multiverse granted Dr. Multiverse the power to seal the crack but she was not strong enough. Thus, Darkseid is logically the multiverse's best chance if only he had the power necessary to defeat the darkness. Flashpoint Batman tried to kill Dr. Multiverse to remove the danger of the crack. Darkseid killed Batman and retrieved the crack out of Maya, then advanced with his forces to Earth-7. There, he confronted the Empty Hand, one of the avatars of the darkness. The heroes gave up hope but Captain Carrot roused them and they settled to stick to Darkseid to Earth-7 where the House of Heroes had collapsed, liberate the rest of the Justice League incarnate, and foil Darkseid after he stopped the darkness. Dr. Multiverse teleported the team to Earth-7 where they saw the remnants of the house. The darkness has possessed their teammates and attacked them. Avery and Dr. Multiverse freed their teammates from the darkness, but the Empty Hand operated the crack to finalize the Oblivion Machine and unlocked a rift that the Great Darkness will use to conquer the multiverse. Darkseid pursued the Empty Hand through the rift, and Thunderer planned to summon his powers to destroy the planet and the rift, but Dr. Multiverse and Avery requested for them to save Barry first. Along with Superman and Captain Carrot, they passed through the rift and entered Earth Flash.1, where they saw Barry. Barry denied knowing them and refused to leave with them. Pariah, the creator of Earth Flash.1, appeared and told them to leave. However, the multivision of Dr. Multiverse revealed that he was the voice of the Great Darkness and quite more formidable than Darkseid or the Empty Hand. In her panic, she teleported the team back to the House of Heroes just as Earth-7 was being destroyed. She told them that Pariah was building an army for the darkness inside the bleed. Justice League Incarnate then teleported the Justice League of Earth-0 to the House of Heroes to recruit them. President Superman then told the League about the darkness. Shadow demons attacked the house and so Dr. Multiverse teleported them to the source of the invasion, a ruined planet in Multiverse-2 where they found Pariah changing his antimatter chamber from the first crisis to allow the darkness to enter his reality. The Dark Army fought them and Dr. Multiverse helped Wonder Woman fight Ares. Pariah then annihilated the assembled heroes with a wave of energy. The Justice League Incarnate were then possessed by the darkness and were tasked to recapture the House of Heroes. In the Orrery of Worlds from the House, Dr. Light destroyed the Chains of Darkness on Justice League Incarnate and freed them from their mind control. Dr. Multiverse combined her powers with Sideways to transport all teams and fight Pariah's forces. The Dark Army were defeated and the Justice League Incarnate went back to guarding the newly expanded multiverse. Tartarus is DC's pastiche of Thanos of Marvel. His armor is impervious to Darkseid's Omega Beams as it was forged from the melted ore of the ancient Spectrum. He has outstanding invulnerability and is tough enough to resist blows from Darkseid. Tartarus can match Darkseid in terms of physical strength and has ripped Behemoth in half. Some years ago, Tartarus made an agreement with the previous incarnation of Darkseid in which the Lord of Apocalypse acceded in leaving Earth-8 for it to be solely conquered by Tartarus. His forecast that Darkseid will return and betray him was correct that he made plans for their future battle. 
When the Kraken and the Multiverse arrive in the universe of Earth-8, Tartarus attacked Angor with the hopes of obtaining the power beyond the crack and began his eternity conquest. He effortlessly extinguished the retaliators. However, the Justice League Incarnate arrived in Earth-8 seeking the crack as did Darkseid. Darkseid was now fused with the crack with all of his various incarnations. Tartarus proposed to Darkseid that they work together to share the power of the crack, but Darkseid had no interest and pounced on him. He and Darkseid ferociously fought for control of the crack, but Darkseid ultimately overpowered and killed him by snapping his neck. Jay Abrams aka Blue Jay is a hero loosely based on Marvel's Ant-Man. Back at the Countdown Presents story arc, he is a scientist who developed a method of shrinking himself and became a costume vigilante. Subsequently, he married Diane, a woman with similar powers. When the meta-human act took place, Blue Jay complied with the law and joined the Meta Militia. When the Americommando became president of Angor, Blue Jay became the vice president. However, Americommando sent Blue Jay on a research study in the Russian wilderness so Americommando can have an affair with Diane. When Americommando's alliance with the forces of Monarch backfired on the Meta Militia and the team was defeated, Blue Jay used his Raven armor to intervene. In the New 52 era, Blue Jay obtained his powers during his adult life before joining the Retaliators. Eventually, Blue Jay and the Retaliators fought the evil Lord Havoc and the extremists. They were all defeated and Blue Jay escaped by shrinking smaller than he ever had before. When he returned to consciousness, he discovered that he was in a subatomic place known as the Microverse. In the Microverse, he met Raymond Palmer and Peon and signaled for Dream Slayer to go there too. Being the last two survivors of anger, Dream Slayer and Blue Jay agreed to save it. He soon went to the sanctuary to remaster the control of his powers, but he was killed together with other heroes and his corpse was eaten by the crows. However, in the Dark Crisis saga, Blue Jay was seen alive and was present at the Justice League funeral. Wangina is the godlike being based on Thor who came to Angor and became active as a metahuman. He sided with the Meta Militia when Tin Man established the Meta Human Act. His human alternate personality is Leonard Grant, a scientist at the Experiment House in New York. He unknowingly had a feud with Gorgon of the extremists due to being close to Gorgon's lab assistant Susan. But this was proven false as Wangina was revealed to be secretly gay. During the Meta Militia's invasion of Slovakia, Wangina's power was disabled by Lord Havoc. His left hand fingers were cut off during the fight, then he was eaten alive and whole by Gorgon. In the post-crisis era, Wangina, also the name of the Australian Aborigine weather deity, can control the elements of Angor. He is believed to be an actual god and a member of the superhero team, the Assemblers. Wangina, Blue Jay, and Silver Sorceress, being survivors of the nuclear holocaust caused by the extremists, went to Earth and tried to destroy Earth's nuclear stockpile. The Justice League and the Rocket Red Brigade stopped them, but Wangina at the end sacrificed himself to prevent a meltdown in the Bialian reactor. Wangina's corpse was then reanimated by Queen Bee of Bialia. He was soon used as a weapon against the Justice League but was killed by Captain Atom. The aquatic being Barracuda served as a double agent between both the Meta Militia and the extremists and he is an analog of Namor. He can change his form from human looking to a more amphibious look. When Monarch came to Earth-8, he was killed by Jason Todd. In the pre-crisis era, Barracuda was one of the four comic book fans recruited at a convention by the Silver Ghost posing as Americommando and was given the opportunity to become a superhero with outstanding fighting and acrobatic skills. Like Namor, he had small wings on his legs and a trident. When Americommando physically assaulted Martha Roberts, Barracuda turned on him as he is unwilling to tolerate violence against women. The origin of Americommando's powers were unknown. He worked for the government on various covert missions after the Second Gulf War. On a mission in South America, he met Tracer and was forced to take him down when Tracer went berserk and killed his teammate Eagle. When the Menta Militia was formed, Americommando served as Tin Man's second in command. He became a US president when Tin Man was killed by Havoc. However, he abused his powers and isolated many powerful metahumans who then created the extremists. However, the truth is that his succession to presidency was fabricated by his government and that he has always been manipulated since his ascension. 
Monarch came to Earth A to recruit the extremists, but they refused him. So Monarch allied with AmeriCommando and the Meta Militia for a final strike. However, Blue Jay, AmeriCommando's VP, did not approve of this. AmeriCommando fell against the extremists and he was replaced by Blue Jay as president. AmeriCommando is more relevant to the ultimate Marvel version of Captain America. His sexual affair with Blue Jay's wife is similar to Ultimate Captain America's affair with the West. The AmeriCommando of the pre-crisis era was actually the Silver Ghost, Raphael Van Zandt, an enemy of the Freedom Fighters from Earth X. His sidekick in this series is Rusty and he formed the Crusaders team. They were strong at first as the Freedom Fighters fell against the Crusaders. The Silver Sorceress possesses magical powers which have become more advanced over time, like creating interplanetary portals. After Wangina sacrifices life, the Silver Sorceress and Blue Jay remained captive in a Soviet meta-human research facility until she opened a portal and escaped to Angor. Her presence in Angor drew Dream Slayer's attention and from her mind, he extracted the portal to Earth. Silver Sorceress soon met and rescued another survivor of her world, a celebrity entertainer known as Mitch Wacky, a parody of Walt Disney. Mitch Wacky survived in his suspended animation chamber, but before he went into his chamber, he programmed his theme park Wacky World to monitor events and endure on in his absence. His robots continued to rebuild Angor after the fallout. With too much intelligence, they also rebuilt the Justifiers and the Extremists, with programmings like the originals. These androids soon destroyed each other as well and the android extremists ruled Angor once more. The android extremists landed in Russia where Blue Jay sought help from the Justice League's Moscow embassy. Justice League Europe tried to fight but Dream Slayer quickly transported them to Angor where they found the Silver Sorceress at Waki World. They all returned to Earth just in time when the United Nations had surrendered to the extremists. Dr. Light cured Wacky of his sickness and Wacky deactivated the extremist androids. Then they discovered that Dream Slayer was not an android, so Silver Sorceress casted a spell that destroyed his body. The Sorceress and Blue Jay then became members of Justice League Europe. Mitch Wacky met Kilowog and together they created a time machine. They traveled 10 years into the past and to his horror, Wacky discovered that it was he who accidentally detonated the mega bomb that created the original extremists. Dream Slayer's essence returned to the source of his power, then traveled and used Maxwell Lord's powers to mind control Wacky and Wally West. He took over the island nation of Kui Kui Kui. In their fight, the sorceress was critically injured, and with her dying breath, she absorbed Dream Slayer into her mind and banished him once again to his land of terrors. She was buried in Kui, and Blue Jay departed soon thereafter. Now let's meet the extremists. The leader of the extremists and the most fearful villain of Earth 8 is Lord Havoc. During the Countdown Saga, Lord Havoc was presented to be born of the royal family of Russia and his name is Alexei Nikolai. There were no complications in the delivery, however, he was born disfigured. Sickened by his son, his father, Tsar Nikolai III of Russia, attempted to kill him but was stopped by his mother who later sent Alexei away to escape the Tsar's wrath. Growing up, Alexei showed great talent for designing machines and androids and even created a malleable liquid metal skin in college that he could command with his mind. When his father discovered that his mother had been sending money to Alexei to finance his study, his father killed her. Furious, Alexei returned to his homeland and used his technology to kill his father. He then proceeded in using his invented devices in destroying Russia. After that, Lord Havoc's activities consisted of helping other neglected powerful metahumans like him. When Tin Man brought the Metahuman Act, Havoc also founded the extremists to fight the oppressors of Angor. They started with the assassination of President Tin Man on live TV. Lord Havok and his Havokoids attacked the Eastern European nation of Slovakia, killing its royal family. Monarch, who was recruiting villains across the multiverse, was impressed and asked them to join his army, but Lord Havok declined. Monarch later retaliated by partnering with the Meta Militia and attacking the extremists in a castle in Slovakia, not knowing that they were inside a power negation chamber. Without their powers, Monarch's army and the Meta Militia were swiftly butchered by the extremists. 
Now aware of the multiverse, Lord Havok planned to follow in Monarch's footsteps as a transuniversal conqueror. In the Multiversity story arc, Lord Havok was born Prince Alexei of Kravia. He was thrown out of the royal family due to his hemophilia. When he grew up, he sold his soul to the might beyond the mirror for new blood and metal skin, which gave him the power to take over the throne and made him the greatest supervillain of Angor. Upon hatching the Genesis Egg, Lord Havok was attacked and mentally shattered by what laid within, and Bowman decided it would be better to put him out of his misery by firing an arrow into his head, killing him. He was revived with his dying wish by the might beyond the mirror. He and the extremists traveled to Prime Earth and seized power in Kravia with plans to expand his dominion, but the new Justice League of America defeated them. Eventually, he sacrificed his life together with Dream Slayer so the Cosmic Adjudicator can give Anger a new life. The analog of Magneto, Hans Lecter aka Dr. Die Hard, owns a school for young metahumans known as the Academy for Advanced Children where they are trained to use their powers. Dr. Die Hard is the closest friend of Lord Havoc. He built a surrogate family with his two children, Anna and Jack. With the passing of the Metahuman Act, his students were rounded up and placed in conditions similar to a concentration camp with chip implants to prevent them from using their powers. A riot broke out that ended in the brutal deaths of Anna and Jack. Lecter led a rebellion that almost failed without the help of Lord Havoc. Lecter then vowed to fight Tin Man's administration with every means possible. Lecter relocated to West Germany and became known as Dr. Die Hard. He created a new school for gifted youngsters and became affiliated with the extremists. When Havok declined in joining Monarch's army, this started a rift between Die Hard and Havok as Die Hard believed they need Monarch's army to defeat the Meta Militia. Monarch partnered with the Meta Militia that caused the death of the Zen men. Lector tried to fight Lord Havok, but he was killed by the other extremists. In the Rebirth Era, Dr. Die Hard joined the extremists in conquering Earth so they can save it. However, during the fight, Lord Havok negotiated with Batman to ally with them to save the League members. Dr. Die Hard saw that sparing the lives of the Justice League as a sign of weakness from Lord Havok. So, he convinced the extremists to make him their new leader. Disappointed, Lord Havok killed Dr. Die Hard as a show of strength. Analogous to Dr. Octopus, Mortimer aka Gorgon is a scientist at the experiment house in New York. In one of his genetic augmentation experiments, something went awry that accidentally mutated Dr. Mortimer. Fortunately, this incident also made him closer to his lab assistant Susan. Susan would become the love of his life. His world was filled with hope and love until the arrival of Dr. Leonard Grant aka Wangina. Susan began spending more time with Wangina, so Mortimer fell into depression and feelings of inadequacy. Finally, when he heard Susan referring to Wangina as Lenny, Mortimer blacked out for an extended period, then came home and discovered Susan to be dead. Blaming Wangina, he took on a fearsome red form with strong tentacles. He became the Gorgon in attacked experiment house looking for Wangina. However, Lord Havok stopped him and told him that Wangina is gay and that he, Mortimer, killed Susan. As it turned out, Mortimer has multiple personality disorder and his tentacles are manifestations of his personalities, one tentacle per personality. Lord Havok then recruited Gorgon to be his eyes and ears within the government. In the Rebirth era, Gorgon was killed indirectly by Black Canary in Elizabethora's Kravia. Vincent Cade aka Tracer is a former soldier during the Iranian war. He deserted his post and while being arrested, they were attacked by the enemy. In the attack, he was critically wounded. Vincent was then sent to Experiment House as a perfect specimen for the government's research on super soldiers. He was also forced to watch violent images to boost his killing instincts and he was implanted with a chip to control him. His first test was to kill a young girl. Because of the experiments, Vincent obtained incredible animalistic abilities such as enhanced senses and durability. When Tracer was first deployed, he killed the Eagle, American Commando's teammate. Lord Havok arrived and removed the chip on his head and recruited him. 
He became Havoc's connection to the criminal underworld, and he had a relationship with Luis Marino, aka the Dream Slayer. In one of his adventures, he encountered the Justice League of Angor. In the Rebirth version of Tracer, Tracer is more similar to Wolverine and his forearm blades and his skeleton are made from Amazonium, an allegedly unbreakable metal from his universe. This metal is also found in his skeleton, however, Lobo was able to bend the metal in his skull and break a blade. He battled Lobo in Ekaterinoras in Kravia when they tried to invade Earth. Tracer then got one of his blades lodged in Lobo's chest so Lobo twisted his muscles and shattered it. Lobo then pounded Tracer's head on the floor, literally flattening his metal skull and crushing his brain. Tracer still survived because of this healing factor. In the post-crisis era, Dream Slayer was one of the few survivors after the nuclear holocaust in Angor. He led the robotic versions of the extremists in conquering Earth but was defeated by the Silver Sorceress. In the countdown era, Dream Slayer had a human persona by the name of Louise Marino. Louise was a nun who dedicated her life to the deity, the Angorian depiction of the presence. Her brother Louis was a thief and was in prison when she was contacted about a new religion called Dreamology, a demonic religion dedicated to the Dream Slayer. Dream Slayer has possessed Louis but needed a stronger host, so the next host was his sister Louise. As Dream Slayer, she has the ability to assault her foes with Hellfire as well as powers of levitation and some limited teleporting powers. In the Rebirth era, Dream Slayer is a magic-using member of the extremists who, at the age of 15, enlisted in the Angorian military. An accident happened granting him access to magic but destroyed his life. He joined the extremists with the hopes of gaining back order in his life. However, he soon realized that Lord Havoc was wrong when they ended up destroying Angor. When the extremists went to Earth, Dream Slayer took it upon himself to control the city of Martoras by freezing the entire city in time. Eventually, Dream Slayer and Lord Havoc sacrificed their lives so the Adjudicator can restore Earth 8. So there goes DC's version of the Avengers and a few others. What can you say about Angor and Earth 8? Do you think DC should create an animated film or live action film depicting the retaliators? Should they create more stories about the Meta Militia or the Zen Men? Do you also find the extremists to be more fascinating than their analogs in Marvel? Let us know what you think and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.